A warm hello to you all from Bucharest, the capital of Romania, in Eastern Europe, where it's just past midnight. My name is Judith Chisholm Macquarie, and I'm an Oplanar Anthropologist. Currently, I am a postdoctoral fellow at the Institute of Advanced Studies, New York College, based in Bucharest. I hope that your evening stroll was as immersive as rejuvenating in getting you the near experience of entering the realm of the night. Of course, rather than talking into a camera at this exciting night gallery event, I decided a distinguished co-host, Cyrus Benyaroyo, I would have preferred to join you all in person. And if I could, would have shared more insights and experiences about people up and working at night, be they mothers, breastfeeding babies, carers in residences with elderly care, elderly people, nightlife or factory workers keeping the city going while others sleep. Nevertheless, I'm delighted to have this opportunity to discuss with you the making and of match at Spitterfields, which has been a labour of love with its ups and downs between 2015 when I began my doctoral field work and when I took the first shot of the Spitterfields night market until 2020 and when the film was launched in London. My thanks go to my wonderful host, Anne-Louis, who moderates this discussion and who, together with her team, has worked tirelessly to bring us all together. What do anthropologists do? They aim to understand values and norms of people who make a specific society what it is and where the interactions between different demographic groups shape their everyday and every night lives. Before talking about what happens in the backstage, a few words about how this nocturnal anthropologist and the maker of Nigel Spitterfields became a filmmaker, I am order. As an anthropologist, I immerse in night ethnographies about migrant workers in cities that never sleep. I'm concerned with the invisibility of migrant night shift workers from public discussions and missing from politicians' agendas. So far, I focused on 24-7 societies in global cities like London. That will change as I will study the smaller cities that also have a nighttime economy and night workers who experience poverty and inequalities. For example, regardless of the size of the urban setting, I am committed in and engaged with public debates to raise awareness of issues around the visibility of night work. I make anthropological understandings of today's society more accessible to the wider critical public, such as in this example when we, with a group of, of academics and nightlife activists, uh, compiled a, a plan for nighttime recovery. And in this chapter uh, where I contributed, we are looking at how to find ways and models for nightlife industry workers individuals and, and other vulnerable populations. My main method of inquiry is a night ethnography. At its core, night ethnography mixes bodily audiovisual methods, which include short films like the one you've just watched, or podcasts. And the idea is to capture images and, and stories at night. So I go out at night, I um, talk to people, I immerse into their lives, um, I take their ways of living and use my own body as my main tool for researching. For example, the way people experience poverty or inequality in and through their bodies while at work. That's what we'd call immersive ethnography, for example. I have collected stories and experiences of people in cities like Budapest, Istanbul, London, Milan, Moscow, Prague and Sofia. And I hope that one day I will do the same in the U.S. cities. Anthropologists call this an experience near and on the ground ethnography to understand from within the body and the minds of the people they're studying, or in this case, the people inhabiting the night. And my body therefore becomes the tool that uh, helps me to understand the world of others from under the skin, as it were. And, you know, the films and the sub-ethnographic methods, uh, the tools as uh, you see on the screen, bridges the gap between the visual and the touches, touching the senses, I mean. For um, night shift spitterfields, I did one year long of night ethnography at London's new spitterfields fruit and vegetable market. I immersed into this kind of experience, as you can see the effort I have uh, put into it. It meant that I walked on average 8.2 kilometers 
a night and by the end of the field work I have done a distance of 2,276 kilometers which meant that you could walk from New York to Louisiana. In anthropology it means um, I was a participant observer um, among precarious workers with whom I shared the same precarious conditions to research uh, for this film and I should switch the fields. For me, it has been a personal subjective affair where I, as a researcher immersed in the deeply in the life of work in people, work of people such as Ali, who has been doing this for, for almost nine years by the time I finished work. As you can see on this screen, uh, I've lost uh, somewhere around 40 kilograms. Um, so it, it, it has been a, a very uh, difficult experience. And uh, here, for example, you can see Ali, uh, how he spends his nights. So for me, as a, as a researcher, I needed to uh, understand the depth of, of such experiences. So I took my own body, note if you want, as I call them, body notes. And uh, I measured the effort of walking uh, long distances with the body loaded with uh, produce, the number of steps, and uh, average the weight of the night load. As you saw in the briefly in the images the, and the charts that I have uh, shown earlier, and for that I used a mobile phone application called Pacer Pedometer that helped me to get that kind of insight. The mixed methods that I use focus uh, not so much on the rhythms of the night itself, uh, but on the on how humans feel uh, when they are up and alert in the opposite hours to the natural physiological rhythms. I want to know why lives of night workers in big cities are usually invisible to the people who work in the day. To do that, I bring in conversation, written text with images, ethnographic filmmakers with social scientists and mixed audiences who are curious about how bodies cope with the night work or uh, how uh, they feel about their contribution to the cities where they live and work and is not being recognized by the day people. In parallel, I used a camera which at the same time turned the lens on me while studying those like Ali, the protagonist. I needed first to check that what I see or, or read about in the media is near to the reality of the people I study in that place, uh, space and time. A market where uh, mostly uh, migrants do manual night work six nights a week. I found the underlying imagery useful to test how I, as a film maker, portray the real people that I spent my working nights with. And if that is close and a true reflection of the reality which we were living and experiencing night by night. Also, how migrant night workers, whom I met in the night market, differed or not from the ones who we see in the tabloid media or politicized messages from actors who portray migrants as villains, uh, health tourists, thieves, and a migration crisis as reason for making freedom of movement less free, as it has been the case in, in Europe, to attract electoral votes from those holding anti-immigration views. Another um, advantage of using visual methods in social science research is that it guides the viewer towards a certain standpoint of analysis in a gentle, non-prescriptive manner, uh, and at the same time allowing for multiple interpretations by the wider critical public, such as yourself. This quest is work in progress. Um, so far, I tried to document uh, on real that is on the screen, the real lives that I encounter in field work to illustrate that although global city is in high demand of night workers who are mostly migrants, until now these men and women night workers seem to point to the same fate that they have no guarantee, guarantee other than to remain faceless, voiceless and vulnerable. My role is to reverse that, even if that means at this stage only to raise awareness among those who are not familiar with uh, problems encountered uh, by night workers. So, Night Shift Spitterfields is um, the last in this um, trilogy. 
explores the invisible, nocturnal and sleepless lives of workers in big cities. The trilogy does not hold itself to an exhaustive account of how migration is actually depicted in cinema. It can be argued in any case that the three short films illustrate how visual methods accompanying immersive ethnography that I spoke about earlier provide insight into the kind of demands of a contemporary society living 24 7 of rhythms put on the flesh and blood of night workers. More, the invisibility of of migrant workers, for example, is symptomatic of a capitalist system extracting as much capital as possible from the labouring bodies and then discard them when they're no longer useful and portray them as the immigrant anti-hero. Thank you so much for your attention and I look forward to further discussion.